horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Cottonwood Valley. I will see you The ranch home of Widow Barnes was one of the prettiest in Cottonwood Valley. Flanked on the north by towering Arrowhead Range, it faced a vast expanse of rolling prairie that seemed without end. A broad wagon trail led directly to the house that echoed now at the hoofbeats of a horse ridden by the widow's youngest son, Emmett Barnes. Oh, boy! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Ma! Oh, Ma! What's wrong with you, Emmett? You're yelling like an Indian. A letter for you. I just picked it up at the post office. Letter? It's from Ricky, Ma. See, it's in his handwriting. Give it to me. Oh. What's he say? Oh, I knew it would happen. I knew my prayers would be answered. Ask and it shall be given unto you. That's what it says in the Bible. You, you mean Ricky's been released from prison? He's been pardoned. A full pardon and he's coming home. Oh, gee. And he says he'll be here today, this afternoon. Oh, I'm so thankful. Oh, it, it's great news, Ma. I'll sure be glad to see old Rick, but I wonder what folks will say. Folks? What folks? Well, everybody in town and on the range here. Ricky was convicted of robbery and they all... He made a mistake, that's all. Now he's free again. He paid the price, and I'm sure he repents. Yeah, I know, but folks will say... I don't care what they say. Let him without sin cast the first stone. Sure, he says that in the Bible, Ma, but lots of people around here don't read the Bible like you do. More's the pity. Well, I've got to get to work. Ricky will be hungry when he gets here. I'll fry some chicken... Gosh, I'm going to ride over and tell Helen the good news. You mean that red-headed weaver girl? Who else? Oh, Emmett, I'm so happy. Think of it. My Ricky's coming home today. Yeah. Well, I'll be back as soon as I talk to Helen. Be sure you are. Remember, it's your brother and my son who's coming home. So you can see how it is, Helen. I'm all so excited she, she doesn't know whether she's coming or going. I imagine she would be. Gee, it's wonderful news. Tell me about Ricky Emmett. I've never seen him. We moved into the valley after he, well, after he went away. Well, Ricky's kind of hard to describe. He's, he, he's just Ricky, that's all. Well, of course, I've heard a lot about him. Is everything they say the truth? Some of it. Does he look like you? Oh, no. <laughs> Ricky takes after Ma. He's handsome. Real handsome. Well, I've heard about that. And I've also heard that he's awfully quick with a gun. Like greased lightning. That's what got him into trouble. 
Yeah, I guess Rick was just born to shoot quick and shoot straight. Oh, how do you feel, Emmett, about seeing him after five years? Oh, I'm tickled. I've always been crazy about Rick. It's Mo I'm kind of worried about. What do you mean? Well, Mo's my idea, the best woman who ever lived. She's good and kind and honest. Reads the Bible every day and lives by it. I know. She thinks that Rick is the greatest fellow in the world. Well, that's natural. He's one of her sons. She probably thinks you're pretty fine, too. Oh, Ma likes me, I know that, but not the same way she likes Ricky. I guess it's because he's the oldest. But and... what are you worried about? Oh, I'm, I'm just hoping that when Rick gets back, he won't disappoint her. That the five years he spent in prison have tamed him down, that, that he won't get into trouble again. I'm sure your brother is everything you hope he is, Emmett. And I think you're foolish to worry. Well, maybe I am. I'd like to meet Ricky sometime. Sure, I'll bring him over. Uh, kind of taking a chance, though, introducing an hombre as good-looking as Rick to my best girl. Oh, don't be silly. The only Barnes boy I'm interested in is named Emmett. Uh, are you sure that? Positive. Well, then I'll take the chance. Oh, I guess I'll be drifting on over home now. Ricky may be there. But don't forget, we're going to the schoolhouse dance tomorrow night. I won't forget. So long, Helen. Goodbye, Emmett. This must be Emmett coming up now, Ricky. Good. Actually, see what the kid looks like. Hello, Emmett. Rick! Ricky, how are you? Oh, gee, it's good to see you. You're not such a bad sight yourself. Doesn't Ricky look wonderful, Emmett? Oh, he sure does, Ma. I've prayed so long for this day, and it's just like the good book says, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. Isn't that right, Ricky? Yeah, 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 Ma, sure. If you say it's in the Bible, I guess it's there. Uh, didn't you say you were going to fix some grub? I'm kind of hungry. Oh, excuse me, son. I've been so excited I forgot all about supper. I'll have it ready in just a few minutes. Well, I see Ma hasn't changed much in five years. She still quotes the Bible every chance she gets. You've made her very happy, coming back home like this. Made her happy? Well, how about me? If you think five years in that territorial prison was any picnic, <laughs> you ought to try it. Oh, no, thanks. Uh, gee, Rick, what are you going to do now? Do? Well, I mean, you're going to settle down here and help Ma and me work the spread, now, but... wait a minute, kid. I may settle down, but it won't be on any two-bit cattle ranch like this one. What? What do you mean? I got some other plans. I didn't put in five years of good behavior and get a pardon just for nothing. Nothing? You're free. This is your home and... Well, what's home if there's no money laying around? Yes, I don't understand. <laughs> of course you don't. <laughs> now you're too young. But you can learn if you string along with me. Where are you going, Rick? Oh, not far. I'll be around the valley here. Are you going to work on another ranch? No. <laughs> I think most of my work will be in towns. Or banks. So you are going back to it? Back to what? Same thing that you got in trouble. No, kid. The only reason I got in trouble five years ago is because I got into a tight spot. Had to shoot my way out. And I didn't have an alibi. And now? I'm getting the alibi first. Guess I must be dumb. Uh, did you ever hear of an hombre called the, uh, the Lone Ranger? Well, sure, everybody's heard about him. He's in and out of this valley quite a bit, isn't he? Well, I don't know. I guess nobody knows much about the Lone Ranger. Except what he looks like. Wears a black mask, rides a white horse. That's right. Good. You, uh, you want to tag along with me, Emmett? Look, Ricky, I don't know what you're talking about, but I got a pretty good idea. Please don't do it. I mind my own business, kid. You do the same. Oh, I know I'm younger than you, and I shouldn't be talking this way, but think of more, Ricky. Did it kill her if you got into trouble again? She thinks the world of you. I can't spend any of that. Besides, it's wrong. <laughs> so I come back home and find my kid brother talking like a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> Dad, you're worse than Ma. Quoting the Bible all the time. Well, maybe so. Only I know how Ma feels. She 
You know, we stuck up for you when folks talk about you being in prison. Oh, yeah? Well, I have, too. I even told my girl all about how swell you are. Oh, so you're going with a girl, huh? What's her name? Helen Weaver. She lives on the next ranch. I I'm taking her to a dance tomorrow night, and if you'll come along, we'll no have all... No thanks, no thanks. You sprout the wings for the Barnes family. I'm going to pay a moose. <laughs> See you later, kid. Oh, wait. Ma's fixing supper. And no, I be... can't wait. I got things to do. Uh, uh, tell Ma I've got a date with the devil. <laughs> Maybe she can read something out of the Bible to match that. <laughs> Emmett, where'd Ricky go? Oh, he, he'll be back, Ma. Tomorrow, or, or maybe the day after. Oh, Ricky. Oh, oh, he'll come back. I promise he will. Late the following afternoon, two men and a boy approached the north end of Cottonwood Valley. They were the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan Reed. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 we'll camp here for a few days. I uh, want to visit the town of Cottonwood. Say, doesn't Emmett Barnes live somewhere near here? Yes, his mother's ranch is only a few miles south. <laughs> Gee, I haven't seen Emmett for almost two months. And why don't you ride up to his place tonight, Dan? I'm going into town. Oh, gosh. I believe I will. But help Toto make camp first. Ah, uh, and this time me show Dan how to make Indian shelter with aspen tree. Good. I'll be back before midnight. Ah. Uh. Come on, sir. Having a good time, Helen? Oh, wonderful, aren't you? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not a very good dancer. Oh, of course you are. You... Why, Emmett, what's wrong? Ricky, my brother, he just came in the door. He's standing over there. Where? He, he sees us. He's coming over here. Oh, he is good looking, isn't he? Hi, Emmett. Hello, Ricky. Oh, Ricky, I was pretty worried about you. Oh, see? you must be Helen Weaver. Emmett told me about you. May I have this dance? Oh, I uh, thanks. <laughs> see you later, Emmett. <laughs> Your mother told me I'd find you here at the schoolhouse dance. Oh, Dan Reed. Where'd you come from? Oh, just riding through it. Hey, what's wrong? You look worried. Well, my brother danced with my girl, and then he disappeared. Oh. Did you take her along? Oh, no, no. Helen's sitting over there. Ricky's been gone almost an hour. Oh, I, I don't see anything to worry about. Well, I... Attention, everybody! Who's that? Bert Miller. He's a deputy sheriff. Sheriff wants 15 or 20 of you men to report to his office at once. He's got to form a posse. What's wrong, Bert? The Overland stage has just been held up and robbed. The driver and the guard were murdered, and the outlaw got away with 5,000 in gold. Golly. Any idea who the hombre was that did it? Hey, he was masked and rode a white horse. Yes. Oh, I've got to get going. Where are you going? Oh, wait here, Helen. I'll be right back. So will I. Well, what are you all waiting for? Hey, it's a sheriff. I sent my deputy in here to get some in for a posse. We've already picked up this trail, Sheriff. Well, come on, boys. He's heading north toward the Barnes place. The Barnes? Oh, I've got to go, Helen. I can't oh, stay here. Emmett. Ricky. Where, where have you been? Out for a little ride. I came back to finish my dance with Helen. All right, this way, men. Get your horses and follow me. We'll run down that murdering apartment. Where's Dan? Dan Reed. You mean that boy you were talking to? Yes. He rode off ahead of the posse. But who are they after? You heard what the sheriff said, Emmett. They're after an outlaw and a murder. And I hope they get him. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Although he didn't know the reason for it, the Lone Ranger realized that the posse was gaining on him rapidly. He healed the great white stallion and urged the horse to even greater speed. Come on, Silver. Come on, boy. With an unerring sense of direction, the masked man led his pursuers over broken country that he knew would lessen their speed. Then he doubled back, parallel to the trail, and headed for the small camp he'd left in the afternoon. As he reined up sharply, he noticed that Dan was astride his new horse, Victor, and that Tonto was preparing to saddle Scout. Ho, ho, Silver, ho, ho. Oh, you got away. I knew they'd never catch you. Pretty big fella. <laughs> You've been riding hard, Dan. Your horse is almost winded. I was at the schoolhouse when a posse picked up your trail. I headed straight for here. And maybe you can tell me why they happened to single me out. The Overland stage was robbed by an outlaw who wore a black mask and rode a white horse. Oh, I see. How did you happen to be at the schoolhouse, Dan? Well, I went to Emmett Barnes' house, but his mother told me he'd taken his girl to the dance. Did you see him? Oh, sure. We just started to talk when a deputy sheriff came in and told everybody about the robbery. I wonder who it could... <laughs> and Emmett was kind of worried, too. He thought that Ricky, his brother, had stolen his girl. Ricky? Ricky Barnes? Oh, I guess so. It's the first time I knew Emmett had an older brother. I thought Ricky Barnes was in prison. He must be out on a pardon or parole. Kim Wasabi, maybe him one. Well, there's no use guessing about it, Tonto. We'll lay low here tonight and visit the Barnes place tomorrow. <laughs> Gosh, we had some run, didn't we, Victor? Better unsaddle your horse, Dan, and rub him down. Sure. Come on, Victor. Ricky Barnes. Uh, me remember him. So do I, Tonto. But we'll wait till tomorrow and find out for sure. Tell me the truth, Ricky. What, was it you last night who... Who did what? Danced with your girl? No, not that. I, I mean, no, it couldn't have been you. You were right there beside me when the posse was trailing that outlaw. Now you're getting smart, Ken. Believe what you see, not what you think. What worries me is that your horse is white and so is the Lone Ranger's. Why well, bring him into it? Say, that uh, Helen Weaver's a nice girl. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame I'm not ready to settle down yet. Might ask her to marry me. Well, would you, Ricky? S settle down, I mean, and marry Helen? <laughs> she might have something to say about that. Oh, I'd ask. I mean, Helen likes you. She, she told me she did. No. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe. You, you know, Ricky, if you really would do that, I believe it'd make Ma happier than she's ever been in her life. Yeah. The trouble with Ma is she'd quote something from the Bible and spoil all my good intentions. There's a lot of truth in those things she says, Ricky. Yeah, I can't say it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hit the hay for a while, kid. Go to sleep now? In the middle of the day? Oh, why not? Had a big night ahead of me. Yeah, see you at supper time, Emmett. Emmett, didn't I hear you and Ricky talking in here? Well, yeah, he just went out to the bunkhouse to go to sleep. The poor boy must have tired himself out at that dance last night. Not that I approve of dancing, Emmett, yeah, but I... Ma. Now, where are you going? Oh, over to the Weaver place. I, I got to see Helen about something important. I just can't understand you, Emmett. I like your brother, but as for marrying him, why, why I don't even know him. He's really swell, Helen. Honesty is in... You said yourself he was good-looking. But, Emmett, this is ridiculous. I don't want to marry anyone right now, least of all your brother. Mm, yeah, I guess it was kind of nervy to ask you. But it sure would please Ma a lot. And I can't get married just to please your mother. Well, there must be some other way. Of course there is. Ricky will find a wife someday. Stop worrying about someday it. Someday may be too late. What do you mean? Mm, nothing, I... I just want Ricky to have an anchor so, so he'll settle down. You're the most peculiar boy I've ever known, Emmett. What's it all about? You, you haven't got a big brother like Ricky, Helen. So there's no use explaining. Oh, Victor, oh, oh. Oh. You and Tonto wait here, Dan. 
I'll go in and talk to Mrs. Barnes. Ah, uh, sure. Hey, wait. Study, Victor. Masked. Who are you? A friend, Mrs. Barnes. May I come in? What do you want? To help you and Ricky. Ricky? He's asleep in the bunkhouse. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Well, if it's something to do with Ricky, you can come in. Thank you. Now. I, uh, I suppose you heard about the robbery of the Overland stage last night. I heard the boys talking about it. Robbery and murder. It's terrible. You're right, Mrs. Barnes. Sufficient unto this day is the evil thereof. That's what the good book says. Mrs. Barnes, where was Ricky last night? He went to the schoolhouse dance. Oh, don't think that just because Ricky made one mistake, he'll make another. He's a good boy. I'm sure he is. That trouble five years ago wasn't his fault. He's paid the penalty and come back home to start fresh again. I believe you, Mrs. Barnes. You won't cause Ricky any trouble, will you? I've never troubled an honest man in my life. I believe in the Bible. As ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them. I agree. Now I'm going to ask you to give a message to Ricky for me. What is it? Tell him that I was here and that I know he won't break the faith we all have in him. Of course I'll deliver a message like that. But who are you? Tell him you to talk to the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Really here, Ma? A tall hombre wearing a black mask? Not over three hours ago. Uh, I can't figure that out. The message doesn't make sense. He was very nice. And he understood everything when I spoke verses from the Bible. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Don't you think he was kind to stop here and ask about you, Ricky? Uh, I don't know, Ma. I was figuring on him being in this part of the country. But uh, staying around for two nights is kind of funny. Why, Ricky? Oh, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Maybe the big hombre is just that dumb. <laughs> I can't understand you. Well, where's Emmett? He went over to Weaver's, and then he was going into town to get some things from the store for me. Good. I'm going into town myself. You can ride back with Emmett in the buckboard. No, I'll saddle a horse. I think I'll need speed in the business I'm figuring on tonight. I think the drover's bank will bear watching tonight. You mean somebody's going to try and hold it up? They may, then. These trees, good place. We watch bank from here. But how do you know that? Well, nothing is certain, Dan. But whoever held up the stage last night knew that I was in this part of the country. That's why he wore a black mask and rode a horse as light as silver. Yeah, and whoever that man is, he knows you're still here. And he may try something else. I think so, Dan. The shots come from bank. You see man come out and shoot. Aren't you going after no. him? No. If he gets away, we'll follow him instead of trying to stop him. There, see? Crook ride white horse. And he is getting away. We'll follow. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Right. Come. Urging their horses forward at breakneck speed, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan followed the bandit who was masquerading as the Lone Ranger. He was an excellent horseman, and soon he outdistanced the posse, but not the two men and the boy who also followed him. A mile or so outside of town, the outlaw suddenly doubled back down through a steep valley trail that took time to negotiate, but whose rocky path left no trail. This valley trail led to but one place, the schoolhouse. He's heading for the schoolhouse. I thought so. Same place he went last night. Circle through this draw. Try to come up at the rear of the school before he gets there. Huh? Oh, oh, there. Oh, steady, boy. Oh. I gotta duck in here. Somebody's on my heels. Oh. Boy, that was close. Now, if it's a posse, I think I've lost him. You've lost the posse, Ricky, but you haven't lost me. The Lone Ranger. It wasn't a very good bank robbery. There's a posse right behind you. They'll be here any minute. Why, you... Oh, don't reach for a gun. I've got you covered. All right. Now what? Well, that's up to you. Did you rob the Overland stage last night and murder the garden driver? You can't prove it. I'm asking you a simple question. And I ain't talking. Did you hear that, Mrs. Barnes? Yes, 
I heard. Emmett? Yeah. Moore, what are you doing here? The Lone Ranger told me that the man that held up the Overland stage used this place as a hideout. And tonight, during the excitement, I came over here because I believed in you, Ricky. My faith was misplaced. Well... That's all I've got to say, Ricky. That's the sheriff and his posse, Ricky. The law will take its course. We you know you're in there. Come out. Come out with your hands up. A confession might make it easier for you. No, I ain't talking. You wait out of there in two seconds, we'll riddle the place. That means some more innocent people will die, Ricky. Your mother, your brother, and Miss Weaver. I'll make the sheriff hold his fire. Wait, wait till they stop firing. Oh! Ricky. Hold your fire, men. Who is it? Why, why, it's Ricky Barnes. And he wasn't alone in here. Look at all these people, Sheriff. Yes. Ricky, Ricky. I tried to stop him from opening the door, Sheriff, but he moved too quickly. Ricky killed himself, really. Something like that. Dan, how do I get the horses? Mrs. Barnes, I'm very sorry that this happened. But Ricky did one thing before he died that made up for a lot he did when he was alive. If he hadn't opened that door, some of us would have been killed. Yes, you're right. I think you'll find the answer to that in your Bible, Mrs. Barnes. I think it's somewhere in the 15th chapter of John. The 15th chapter of John. Hand me the school Bible, Emmett. Here it is, Mrs. Barnes. Let's see... Yes, this, this must be the party, men. Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friend. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>